Welcome back. South Africa's unemployment rate declined slightly in the third quarter. Stats say data shows the official unemployment rate in the quarter was at 31.9%, down from 32.6% in the second quarter. Uh, the unemployment rate, according to the expanded definition, which includes discouraged job seekers, is at 41.2%. Stasi Say says these numbers reflect the first time employment numbers surpassed pre-COVID employment levels. Most of the jobs created in the third quarter were in the formal sector, mainly in the services industries. The largest gains in employment were recorded in finance, followed by government, agriculture and construction sectors. However, there were job losses recorded in the manufacturing and mining industries, which could be reflective of the negative impact of weak global demand, low commodity prices, as well as structural constraints like load shedding and logistics challenges. The number of unemployed persons decreased by 72,000 to 7.8 million, while discouraged job seekers also went down. Post-COVID recovery, that is what we're seeing, as well as growth in employment because we have surpassed uh, what we were having pre-COVID times. Having said so, in the third quarter, 2023, the biggest contributors were finance. Finance contributed 237,000 jobs. It was followed by community and social services at 119,000 jobs. And indeed, we see agriculture at 61,000 jobs and construction, which has been struggling for quite some time, contributed 53,000 jobs. Economists say these numbers show that the labor market is resilient despite the challenges the economy is facing, including electricity supply constraints as well as logistics challenges. It's consensus expectation that the economy should recover in terms of growth. We're expecting 1.1% next year rising to around 1.7 by 2025 and 1.8 by 2026. But all of this is premised also on the global economy as well as on how South Africa uh, sought out the issues of infrastructure inefficiencies, particularly load shedding as well as um, uh, in, in inefficiencies in, in ports and rail. Uh, but despite that, what we are seeing in terms of the labor market is that it has actually shown incredible resilience as I have indicated that 2.5 million jobs created over the past eight quarters, uh, despite economic weakness, I think that is, that is, that is uh, to be appreciated in this kind of economic environment. Kosatu says the high unemployment levels pose a threat to democracy. These unemployment levels must pose the greatest threat to our emerging democracy. And unless we're able to do something significantly and urgently to reduce the numbers of persons who can't get employment through no fault of their own, we're going to see a social crisis visiting itself on South Africa. Mm -hmm. We'd urge the government to take decisive and urgent steps to address this problem because it undermines people's dignity if they can't find employment and it visits poverty on many, many households who already have stunted levels of development as a result of the poverty levels in South Africa. States SA says young people remain the most vulnerable in the labor market, with youth unemployment in the third quarter standing at 43.4%. Gloria Safakomosi, SABC News, Johannesburg. For more on this, so we're now joined by labor lawyer Michael Bagriam, and he joins us via our video link. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, the late edition. Of course, we saw unemployment figures uh, decline slightly. Perhaps if you can just tell us uh, what does this actually mean uh, for our unemployment figures? Not very much, unfortunately. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually very, very disappointed. Uh, the reality is it's, this is one of the first times I have to agree with Kusatu um, in that we are in desperate stakes at the moment. It's almost half our working population or half the population that should be working um, are out of jobs. Mm. Uh, there's a structural problem in South Africa in that our government, which should be creating uh, an environment which is conducive to job creation, has done nothing at all. In fact, all they've done is they've acted as a handbrake to job creation. The rest of the world have far surpassed their COVID figures. We're now batching what we were just before COVID. And our economy, if you remember, just before COVID was in dire straits. Our unemployment was in dire straits, 
And now we move a few minor percentage points and people are applauding on the sidelines. Yeah. I think Kasatu is absolutely correct. We are on the verge um, of people really saying that we've had enough um, and our government just doesn't seem to understand it. When you look at the age group 15 to 34, they're completely locked out of the economy. They have no opportunity whatsoever. And that is the bulge. The bulge of South African population is that age group, 15 to 34. It's the most volatile age group. That, that's an age group that wants to get into the economy. People want to get married. They want to have children. They want to buy houses. They can do nothing like that. And so I, I strongly believe it's, it's quite frightening, actually, uh, as to why we haven't had an Arab Spring in this country, because when any other country reaches 40 percent, which is our expanded definition, it's a bit more, it's about 43 um, percent, I, I believe that South Africans are on that edge. We're on the precipice. And our government can do some structural changes to our labor laws, to our labor environment, which would cost them nothing at all. I mean, all you have to do is take small businesses and uncouple them from the bargaining councils. And I surmise we'll have a million jobs almost overnight and cost no one anything. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. The ANC government doesn't want to fix the structural barriers. And those barriers are numerous. I, I've been practicing labor law now for almost 40 years. And I've been shouting that the barriers are in the way of small business. We all know that small business is the job creator of the future. It should be creating jobs right now. We're seeing it with all our neighbors, all our African neighbors, are, their jobs are soaring. Uh, wherever you go, there are signs on shops and factories saying jobs on offer. Um, over here, there are people walking in the streets with matriculation certificates and they can't get anything. Yeah. Um, I, I've spent quite a lot of time now speaking to the unemployed of South Africa and they just feel they've been left out mm. and they feel they'll never be able to get into the economy. It's a tragic situation. Yeah. And, and every uh, single quarter we read about it. Yeah, and Michael, as much as uh, you paint a very bleak picture when it comes to the unemployment levels in the country, uh, for much of today, uh, you know, we saw some people even uh, celebrating uh, these uh, figures somewhat. And, you know, we are told that, uh, you know, there has been a slight job creation. Maybe let's also talk about the slight job creation uh, which they speak of. And we are told that uh, the finance sector has uh, been the biggest uh, uh, job creation. What type of jobs? are these uh, which uh, you know we are being told uh, which has been created well they are obviously the people with more education more qualifications um, the history behind them those are the jobs that uh, are being created and where are they being created they're being created in the Western province and we've seen this in the last three quarters and the Western province is showing enormous growth and it's probably because they're getting rid of red tape they're running a clean government. We need to reflect that in every single province because it doesn't help that the Western province is down to 20% unemployment, but we're seeing other provinces at almost 50% unemployment. And that tells you a story um, that, yes, government does have to create an environment to create jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. It's not their job to do. What they have to do is they have to open it up open up the field so that the small businesses can start creating the jobs. And where are those jobs being created? In the Western province. Uh, they look at every single blockage um, and they're looking at the blockages. I know I've been watching them carefully uh, and we could see it. We could see it in, in other provinces. They could do that. We have resilient people. We have a young population. We have a population that wants to work. They're energetic. But what's failing them? And we can name numerous things, but I strongly believe that our education system is, is up to maggots. Um, the railways is up to maggots. We, we can look, I mean, I've just been trying to look what, what's really destroyed over here. Transnet, the ports, load shedding. I, I can carry on for an hour. Um, we all know the problems. Every single yeah. one of us, you and I know the problems. And government has to tackle those problems. We can't have families saying, no one in this family is working. And I'm hearing this all the time. Mm. It's a tragic situation, absolutely tragic. 
And I think it's going to take a change of government to change this because for 20 years we've been shouting, how come we are the worst unemployment in the world when we have all the resources? We have the facilities, the resources, the people, a young, active population. Our people are better than most other countries. What's going on? Why can't they find employment? Yeah. And I think it's the handbrake that's, that's standing in the way. It's, it's really not fair. I've got a job. I can't say, well, I've got a job, I'm, I'm fine, uh, let's forget about it, because we're not living in an island, we're living together as one country, yeah. and we can't have this anymore. South Africans have been failed by our government. Yeah. Does South Africa have the capacity? I mean, you, you keep on speaking about, uh, you know, we have fertile ground uh, to create jobs in this country. Is there capacity to create these much-needed jobs in this country? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I merely need to quote um, our previous two, two previous ministers of finance ago, Tito Mabweni. Um, he made a remark at one set on his State of the Nation, straight after State of the Nation address. He said, all we have to do is uncouple small business from big business and we'll have a million jobs. And he was absolutely correct. But who shouted him down? The government. The ANC government shouted their own minister of finance down. And he hit the nail on the head. Tito Mogweni was a man who came from the labor movement. He was the labor minister. He was the governor of the Reserve Bank and then became finance minister. And when he made that remark, I said, aha, the pennies dropped. And no one listened to him. No one, yeah. listened, no one cares. Um, and what's happening now is when we can't find jobs, we then look for scapegoats. So we make the equity legislation more harsh. Uh, we pick on foreigners. Uh, we do all sorts of weird things, but none of that is creating yeah. jobs. It's no good looking at legislation that has already failed and then say, let's make it stricter. All right. That is uh, Michael Bagriam there just giving us his insights when it comes to those unemployment figures which have slightly declined. And of course, as some celebrated, uh, Michael paints a very bleak picture in terms of the outlook on the country and says the answer lies with small businesses and says that uh, much jobs can be created in that sector. Let's take a quick ad break. We'll have more news for you when we return. Stay tuned to SABC News.